Hey guys, it's Miss Kephart, and um, we're going to do our notes on pathogens. So have your notes out and just be ready to take some information down on the different types of pathogens. So the first one we're going to start off with is bacteria. And so these are kind of the questions that you should be able to answer when we finish this. What are they? Where can they be found? What are their sizes and shapes? Um, how do they reproduce? Are they helpful? Are they harmful? How are they? So make sure you're able to answer those as we get through the presentation. So we know bacteria, we've talked about this in class, um, they're prokaryotic, um, which means those are those simple organisms that we talked about um, compared to eukaryotic, which are the complex. So we can see prokaryotic, there's no nucleus, the DNA is free floating. Um, these are single celled organisms, unicellular, and they're found everywhere. So you're gonna find bacteria in your body, you're gonna find it on your skin, you're gonna find it in the air, in the water, in the soil. I mean, you're kind of surrounded by it. Um, so they're everywhere. Um, Bacteria come in three different shapes, it's spherical, so those are the circular ones that you see on the left that are kind of greenish in color. Um, they're rod shaped, which is what you see in the middle, and then they're spiral, which is what you see on the end. So those are the three shapes that they come in. And when we compare them in size, if you look and see, which I know you might be able to see my cursor, bacteria fall right in here. So between a chloroplast and a plant and animal cell, that's about the size of a bacteria versus as we start getting towards human eggs and frog eggs and things like that. Um, but when we compare it to things like an atom, it's much larger than that. And we things like a, like a virus, which is right here, a bacteria is definitely gonna be much larger in size. <clears throat> now, bacteria reproduce in a very um, quick method, which is why you are gonna get sick quicker with an infection from bacteria than you would something like a virus. So when we have a bacteria, you can see right here bacteria number one, and each bacteria has some amount of time it takes to reproduce. Bacteria don't reproduce by needing a male and a female. They reproduce by simply having one and it splits into two. It's called binary fission. Um, so what they're able to do is just have one, it splits into two. So as you can see, you go from one to two, and after a little bit of time, two goes into four, and four, we can see goes and so we get much, much bigger. And in an hour's worth of time, that's a lot of bacteria that have developed. So when you get sick, usually from a bacterial infection, it comes on a lot faster than it would from a viral infection. Because it, as we'll talk about later, viruses are gonna need a little bit more to reproduce. But some of these bacteria that reproduce in 20 minutes, you can, in a 24 hour period, have a humongous load of bacteria in you and thus making you very, very ill. So when we think about helpful and harmful, Bacteria are helpful, and for the most part, most of them are very helpful to us. They eat other harmful substances. They eat other bacteria that's bad. They eat um, viruses. Um, and they kind of keep us, our health under wraps. You know, we think of yogurts and things like that. They keep your pipes clean and, f like, moving. Um, they help in your digestive tract, so they do have good things, but there are a few that are bad, and when they're bad, they're really bad. So these are things like salmonella and E. coli, um, and they, when they hurt you, they can really hurt you. They can kill you. Um, they, you get things from breathing them in. You can get it by eating things or open cuts. If I touch something with my hands and I've got an open wound, I could, you know, contact it that way. Due to its quick reproduction, that's why we get sick really quickly. And uh, next we have the virus. What are they? How do they work? Are they alive? Because whether they're living or not is always a very large question. So we're going to think of as a very small particle. Um, they contain either DNA or RNA, but it's a particle. So don't think about like a cell. It's just a particle of matter. Um, it's smaller than bacteria in size. Um, they reproduce because they need a host. They have to have a host. So if we see here, Here's the virus. The virus has to enter your cell. So it takes a while for it to get the right key to unlock the door. Think of it like that. It has to have a key to unlock the door. So you have viruses in you right now and they're not harming you because they don't have the keys to get inside of your cell. But if they do, due to, could be a weakened immune system, could be a lack of sleep, it could be whatever, they find a way in. All it does now, so this virus gets in, and it takes over the nucleus of your cell. And essentially, it's almost like it makes it a zombie. It makes it, it makes your cell do its bidding. So it makes your cell make more viruses. So your cell will make and churn out more viruses until it gets to a point where it can't hold them anymore and the cell bursts. And then all of these viruses go find a new cell and do that to them. But this is a little more timely. So this is where you get things like 
the flu that might take a couple of days to show you signs and symptoms versus something like a bacterial infection, which you might see, you know, in a 24 hour period. Um, but this is how virus reproduces. Now, when it talks about living versus non-living, viruses are not considered living because they do not own any, they cannot live by themselves. They have to rely for everything on their host. Viruses don't eat, viruses don't maintain homeostasis, viruses don't um, reproduce without the use of a host. There's nothing that they're going to do without needing something else. So they do not classify them as living because they do not meet those criteria of life that we've talked about. All right, from there, we're going to talk about a parasite. And parasites and fungus are the last two. I'm not going to list out questions because you kind of got the gist of what you need to know. But a parasite is a harmful organism. Um, its relationship to its host is not a good one. Its relationship is... So the relationship to the... Um, for the, the parasite and the host is not a good one. They need their host, they use them for um, getting nutrition and things of that nature. Um, and what it does is it gradually wears the host down. So if you were to have a parasite in you, you would start to over time feel sickly, you would feel more fatigued. Um, things like a tapeworm, for example, is going to really start to pull at your nutrients so you're not getting those nutrients so you feel weakened. Um, and so it's harmful. Um, now, when we think of a parasite, and these are some examples, I know they're gross. This is a tapeworm. This is a, um, a parasitic worm that's in the foot. And this guy right here, which is that, um, I don't know what it's called. I forget the name of it. But what it actually does is it latches onto the tongue of the fish, and it actually consumes everything that the fish is trying to consume. So therefore, at some point in time, it's probably going to kill the fish. The virus, or the virus, I'm sorry, the parasite doesn't want to kill its host. It's almost like it wants to live on you as long as possible and take you to the brink. But if it kills you, it has to find a new host. So that's kind of problematic for it. So it's really not out to kill you, but it may end up killing you. All right, a fungus, single-celled or multicellular organism. Some examples include mushrooms, molds, mildews. Um, they can be harmful when they get inside of our lungs. Um, they can cause definitely some respiratory issues. Um, this is athlete's foot, so we know that that's caused by a fungus, and that can definitely um, cause irritation. If it's left untreated, it can cause infection. Um, these are you know, molds and mildews you probably have been familiar with um, if you've seen these before. Um, so, you know, definitely things to sort of keep in mind. So the biggest thing to get from this is that there's four types of pathogens, virus, bacteria, fungus, and parasite. They all have different means of making us ill or sick. Um, make sure you kind of have an understanding of what each of them are um, and examples of what they are. We will take this further in our next set of notes and we talk about disease. If you have any questions, please feel free to see your teacher and ask about them.